Have you ever had to engage a subcontractor or supplier on a construction project? Do you ever get confused about all the different types of contracts and parties involved on a construction project? Well, this video is designed for you. My name is Tim and I'm a project engineer with lots of experience on the design and construction of major infrastructure projects. I've been building short courses to teach the fundamental construction management skills to engineers and other construction management professionals. So far, we've had over a thousand students enroll in our courses. Each course is loaded with hours of content and practice activities to make sure you're equipped with the skills you need to excel at your job. This short video is an extract of our course on construction and procurement management, where we'll talk about what procurement is, the different parties involved in construction projects, and the importance of effective procurement management. If you find this video interesting and useful, check out the link below in our below description to our complete Udemy course on construction procurement management. Hi, and welcome to the first section of our procurement course. We'll start by trying to answer the question, what is procurement and why is it important? Hopefully, by the end of this section, you should have a clear understanding of what procurement is and why it's fundamental to construction management. In this section, we'll talk about engineering contracts, define procurement, talk about its objectives and importance, and how procurement supports risk management and balancing project outcomes. Before we can jump into a clear definition of procurement, we need to understand why contracts are such a fundamental part of engineering and construction management. Construction management and construction projects are massive exercises in teamwork. Depending on the scale of the project, hundreds of different people from multiple different companies will be involved. With the complex multidisciplinary projects we see today, it would be incredibly rare for any one company to be able to complete all the works on a major project using their own employees. Therefore, head contractors also known as general contractors, always need to engage external parties to perform works for them in the same way the project developer will engage a head contractor to complete the project for them. All these relationships are governed by contracts. There are contracts in place between the project developer and head contractor and between the head contractor and all their subcontractors and suppliers. These contracts specify the services the seller organisation is providing, the price the buyer organisation is required to pay, and the terms and conditions of this relationship. Now we understand what contracts are and why they're relevant, we can now more clearly define procurement. Procurement is effectively the process for developing these commercial relationships. It's the process of acquiring the external goods and services required by the project team to complete the project. It is the process of the buyer organisation identifying and forming all of these contractual rela relationships. As this course is written from the perspective of the head or general contractor, in this course we're only focusing on how head contractors engage subcontractors. However, the way a project developer engages a head contractor or a subcontractor engages other subcontractors is still called procurement. Examples of this type of procurement we'll be looking at are how a head contractor would engage a steel reinforcement supplier or selecting a heating, ventilation and air conditioning subcontractor. The Project Management Body of Knowledge, PMBOK for short, defines procurement as the process of purchasing or acquiring the products services or results needed from outside the project team. It is also one of PMBOK's 10 key project management knowledge areas. So what are we trying to achieve through the procurement process? Well, if we take a step back and look at the overall project's objectives, we're trying to get the job done safely, under budget and ahead of program. So basically, with procurement, we want to engage the market in such a way to meet these objectives. We want to be selecting the subcontractors and suppliers capable of completing the job in the way we require at the lowest feasible cost. Procurement has significant legal 
implications, as well as overall impacts on project outcomes. Therefore, there needs to be a disciplined approach in place to ensure we put in place the contractual relationships and set the project up for success. Construction projects have a fixed budget, program and performance requirements. They are competitively tendered between multiple general contractors and the winner always has low margins and a tight program to achieve. Getting procurement right is critical to ensuring the project can be delivered within these constraints and the head contractor, our employer, makes money. We need to competitively procure work but also need to be choosing subcontractors who can do the work on time and to the required quality standards. If we select a subcontractor who has a low price, we may suffer delays or poor quality of works. Conversely, we may not have the budget to use a high quality subcontractor. Program, budget and quality objectives need to be carefully balanced to ensure we get the best possible outcome. On top of this, construction projects have complex supply chains. What I mean by this is there are always multiple different options to deliver each package of works. We can do everything from self-perform the works using our own labour, plant and materials to using full turnkey subcontractors. There are multiple risks and scope allocation decisions that need to be made for each package of works to ensure the best possible outcome is achieved. Something as simple as deciding to free issue concrete to our FRP contractor could have significant or unforeseen logistical consequences. Finally, procurement has significant legal implications. We are forming binding contracts with other companies. Legal disputes can and do arise. The way we allocate scope and risk, the contract particulars we choose, and even simple dis discussions and meetings during the procurement phase can all play into this. Procurement can have cascading impacts and we need to make sure we are setting the project up for success. Effectively, procurement is how we set up to deliver the project. We need to make sure we are choosing the right subcontractors and defining their scopes correctly to get the best possible project outcome. We'll talk about this a lot more during sections two or three, where we'll talk about specific scope allocation decisions but one of the most effective ways we'll manage risk on a construction project is through procurement. Risk can be defined as the possibility of unfavourable outcomes. A massive part of construction management is risk management, so many different things can go wrong on construction projects. Safety, environmental, quality, productivity and community issues, just to name a few. The way we allocate risk and responsibility between parties is a key part of procurement. Imagine a package of works where we can either self-perform or subcontract. If we self-perform, we'd be responsible for sourcing all the labour, plant and materials, coordinating the works, work crews and monitoring and controlling the quality of the works. We would hold the productivity, program, cost and quality risks. Alternatively. If we subcontracted out the works, we could simply pay a subcontractor a fixed fee to complete the required scope of works within a set time. All these risks would now sit with the subcontractor. The subcontracting option has less risk, but will most likely cost more as we will be paying a risk premium as well as the subcontractor's profit margin. You can see from this example how we choose to deliver and procure a scope of works has significant risk and cost implications. Getting this delivery methodology correct is critical to a successful project. Looking, locking in subcontractors and suppliers cements our delivery methodology. Therefore, we need to make sure we are factoring in all the project outcomes into this decision. As we've seen, there are multiple different ways to deliver the same scope of works. We can use a full lump sum subcontract, schedule of rates contracts, free issue materials and so on. There will also be additional constraints that affect how we procure works, including the clarity of scope, the availability of design drawings, the criticality of the works and how well we are already adhering to the program. 
There is never a perfect solution, but there are definitely better solutions than others. We need to make sure procurement is done properly to give the project the best possible chance of success. Now we've gone through what procurement is and why it's important, we're going to move on to a practice activity to get you guys thinking like construction management professionals.